My name is Renee Goodman. I'm from the New York Small Business Development Center. Welcome to today's panel, Access to Capital, Small Business Lending. Today's host is the Pace Small Business Development Center. The New York SBDC is a U.S. Small Business Administration resource partner. Our free services are made possible by funding from the SBA, New York State, and our host campuses. Joining us to lead things off is Pace SBDC Director Andrew Flam. Andrew, I will turn things over to you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, again, uh, my name is Andrew Flam. I'm the director of the Pace University Small Business Development Center here in Lower Manhattan. And I welcome you all to the session today, whether you're joining us here from New York City or from elsewhere in the state. Um, welcome and, and hopefully the session will be uh, very impactful for you. We have some terrific uh, presenters today and look forward to kind of a very uh, engaging discussion. Wanted to uh, kind of go through some information. Again, this will be a list of the participants who will be joining us in a short bit. Um, but first, I want to go through just some quick information about uh, the New York uh, Small Business Development Center Network, the range of services we offer, and then kind of offer some kind of, you know, initial discussion points for you to consider in advance of the session today. First off, uh, we are part of a network of centers throughout the state. Uh, we are funded by an array of sources, including uh, the federal government through the SBA, as well as through the Research Foundation for New York State, as well as our host campuses. We have 22 centers located throughout the state. So whether you're joining us here in New York City or elsewhere, uh, there is an SBDC close by to you. And uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you and, and serve the small businesses in the state. Uh, our focus is really on a couple of the issue areas. One is we provide uh, intensive and kind of uh, personalized one-on-one -on -one business advisement to entrepreneurs uh, who are either looking to expand or launch a small business here in New York State. And that's really been kind of our bread and butter over uh, the, the several decades that our network has been in place. Um, all the costs, all the services that we provide are offered at no cost. So we certainly encourage you to take advantage of the services and connect with a business advisor if you're not already. We also do a wide range of training programs. Some are in-depth uh, kind of, you know, deep dives into particular topics. Others are kind of, you know, set up uh, in panel arrangements and you know, bringing on experts such as today. Um, so uh, again, we offer sessions as do our colleagues throughout the state. Want to touch on a couple of quick um, items of note in terms of kind of what we're doing. I think you know, some of the key one-on-one -on -one business advisory services really focused on uh, access to finance, you know, really looking at the different uh, forms of, of, of financing available, whether it's through debt or equity opportunities, crowdfunding, um, and sort of thinking about the different components that go into um, what an effective presentation, what materials you might need to be able to be considered for this. So looking at financial projections, thinking about a business plan narrative and other documents that are be required by these lenders, by investors, by other key stakeholders. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well. And I'm sure they'll get into what the requirements are uh, from their respective institutions. On the marketing and sales front, sort of also thinking about you know, what you need to do to be able to generate greater awareness of your business and, and bring more uh, sales prospects, you know, uh, through your pipeline. So think about website uh, development or expansion, uh, tackling e-commerce, you know, that, that's certainly uh, an increasingly important part of, of the business model post-COVID and uh, other opportunities through social media and others. Um, our business advisors are really, really strong in terms of helping you kind of put together uh, solid and effective pitch packages and lead generation. So uh, again, so this is kind of a good opportunity for you to connect with an advisor. On the procurement side, uh, we were uh, we had the opportunity to kind of connect with our SBA colleague uh, last week on procurement and certification opportunities. But you know there are a wide range of opportunities at the federal, state, and local level uh, for businesses uh, with various certifications, whether it's through the SBA's array of programs, as well as through the city and state and and. Uh, uh, you know, other uh, opportunities through minority women uh, business enterprise certification. So if these are things that are relevant to your business um, and to your ownership structure, we certainly encourage you to take advantage of them because they really give you an opportunity and a leg up on, on securing procurement. So um, that's a different topic and a different day, but I did want to reference if these things are of interest to you, uh, you know, do connect with an advisor and go through that as well. Um, one other interest area I think I want to make sure that I, I give a shout out to as part of the SBDC network, we have uh, uh, our colleagues up in Albany uh, who operate what we call the, the research network. 
these are really talented uh, research librarians that pull together kind of compelling market data that can really help you in terms of honing in on uh, who your business uh, is, is searching, uh, business development opportunities, and other kind of industry data that could be really, really helpful to you. Uh, so if you're interested in kind of securing this data for your business, uh, all you need to do is connect with the business advisor. It's all free to SBDC clients. Um, so we will talk about a, a range of, of financing options today. Uh, we have been keeping track of, of these um, you know, different options and links uh, to uh, our, all of our partners today, as well as others on our websites. But very briefly, I just want to go through a couple of key terms that you know I think our, our lender uh, colleagues and obviously um, you know our, our partners at the SBA will go through today. First off, so thinking about kind of you know the source of funding that you're looking for, um, whether it's a term loan or a line of credit and what that's gonna look like for you, you know, whether you're gonna look at a term loan effectively paying off uh, something kind of over a long-term period and being able to match you know, what might be a long-term capital need uh, to this term loan versus a line of credit, which is sort of more of a, a seasonal arrangement and maybe kind of to help you with uh, periods during the year where your cash flow may be kind of running short, um, you know, taking advantage of, of holiday sales or, you know, certain things that are kind of, you know, ebb and flow in terms of how your business operates. So um, this will be kind of something that I imagine that our lender colleagues will be speaking about today. And I think it's important for you as small businesses to sort of think about what might be the best fit for you. Um, the uses of funds, you know, so a lot of the business we work with, you know, come to us with a specific need. They want to purchase a particular piece of equipment or they want to be able to have uh, some working capital in place, you know, to be able to hire some additional employees, whatever it might be, to be very specific about what you need and figure out whether that's a one time or a recurring cost. Um, and having this information at hand, I think, helps expedite and improve communication with the small business lenders so they kind of have an understanding of who you are, what you need, and, and what that amount is and what you're kind of going for. Um, so thinking about long-term versus short-term repayment and, you know, fixed versus variable kind of ties into, um, you know, uh, what, what the need is and what you're going to be going for. And then sort of a personal guarantee, which is a topic I'm quite sure will come up as well, is sort of making sure that you all have you know, what uh, you know, my colleagues here will kind of reference is the skin in the game. They're going to want to be able to make sure that you're providing some of your own funding towards the project and that a personal guarantee is something that you're going to be able to put up to reference the fact that if things don't go well, that this is something that you're kind of on the hook for, so to speak. So uh, that's just an indication, just something to consider as you're going forward. I will jump into the SBA programs that I have listed here. Um, my colleague Beth Goldberg, the district director for the SBA's New York district office, um, is terrific and she's got a very talented team and she'll be covering this material. But uh, I think it's just important to know that the SBA programs are a terrific resource for small businesses. And I think um, you know, folks should be uh, considering these as you're looking at opportunities to connect with these lenders and others as well. Uh, so finally, I wanted to kind of wrap with just for a couple of things to think about. Um, you know, meeting with our business advisors. All of our services are offered at no cost. So we look forward to working with you, helping connect uh, with financing sources and other things that might be useful to you. So thinking about, again, uh, what your needs are, being specific about uh, those items and thinking about that project budget and then the components of, of what might these, these lenders might be uh, tapping into. Again, thinking about business plans, thinking about financial projections, and then the corresponding assumptions about you know, what you're going to need that money for. So uh, we'll go into that a bit further as well today. Uh, finally, you know, for those businesses here who uh, have been impacted by uh, COVID-19, there are a wide range of recovery programs. Um, some have expired, but there are a number that are still in place, both in the public and private sector. Uh, we do have uh, resources tapped on our website, but we're keeping track of these as well. So this is how to contact us. I really appreciate all of you uh, taking part in today's session, and I really appreciate the partnership with the SBA New York District Office. And with that in mind, I want to turn the floor over to uh, my colleague, Beth Goldberg, the District Director for the SBA's New York District Office. Beth, it's all yours. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And thank you, Andrew, for the warm, warm introduction. And thank you uh, to the PACE Small Business Development Center for allowing me to participate and join you at this virtual forum. As a former entrepreneur, it's great to be with so many small business owners today, especially women during Women's History Month and leading up to International Women's Day. Today, I'm glad to let you know that entrepreneurship has rebounded and is on the rise once more. 
The SBA, once known as America's best kept secret, is a secret no more. Pandemic economic development aid programs like the Paycheck Protection Program, COVID, economic injury disaster loans and advances, the Shuttered Venue Operator Grants Program and the Restaurant Revitalization Fund have provided more than $1.1 trillion in direct loans and payments to small businesses. The reason I share these numbers with you is very often as entrepreneurs, we feel that we're alone, but we're not alone. There's 32 million of us going to work every day and every day is 24 seven. So for most of us, when we're entrepreneurs, um, thanks to the US Small Business Administration's work on the ground enacting the American Rescue Plan Act, coupled with continuous, coupled with continuous vaccinations, small businesses have safely reopened and are leading the nation's economic to grow at its fastest pace in over 40 years. Working together locally, we have faced down challenges and overcome hardships for ourselves, the Metro New York small business community and our economy. The SBA has delivered, as I said, more than 1.1 trillion in small business economic aid programs nationally, and more than 18 billion in the Paycheck Protection Program loans for almost over half of the New York City's small businesses over 900 shuttered venue operator grants and more than 1.6 billion and billions more throughout the nation in the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, COVID economic injury, disaster loans and advances. I wanna take a moment and tell um, everyone how proud I am of the team in New York at SBA, as well as the coalitions of partners at the SBDC, SCORE, the Women's Business Centers, uh, veterans business uh, centers, as well as the city and the state of New York that made this uh, Herculean effort here in the city possible. As we turn the tide on a once in a century pandemic, powering our economy's historic recovery and delivering some of the strongest rates of job creation and new business applications in America, small business owners are leading the way as they did in 2008 with the, um, after the Great Recession. Small businesses are the engine of the New York City economy and apps in our COVID economic aid programs, the SBA is helping them throughout 2022 and beyond with our agency's traditional programs, such as our flagship 7A working capital loans, our 504 loans for real estate and long-term fixed assets requiring as little as 10% down and microloans of up to $50,000 geared towards startups, newly established or growing small business endeavors. And we'll hear more about that a little bit later. Um, we can only succeed thanks to our lending partners, some of which are here today. In a normal SBA back loan, the federal government guarantees a portion of the deal funded by a private non-tax, funded by private non-taxpayer funds to reduce the lender's risk. That helps our agency assist entrepreneurs directly in starting, growing, expanding, and even recovering. Since the start of the federal fiscal year in October of 2021, in Metro New York alone, almost $435.5 million has been guaranteed by lenders to over 700 borrowers using our programs. The SBA has been working and helping them start, grow, expand, and recover every step of the way. Also due to the month, I just want to point out that more than 20% of all of SBA's New York district loans have been made to women-owned small businesses. In our New York office's largest lending year to date, last year, the SBA backed 1.45 billion in lending to almost 1,900 small businesses through our funding programs, let alone the thousands of others that receive one-on-one -on -one counseling, mentoring, and advice from our resource partner network, of which PACE SPD is a vital part. Through your individual journeys, much like my own in the private sector, we sure have a common experience facing firsthand the challenges of starting a business. My years in economic development could not fully prepare me for the challenges ahead. Many are in the same position 
And that's where the SBA Resource Partner Network and S PACE SBDC can help. SBDC advisors help small business owners through all stages of the business life cycle, from building a business plan to helping them into a network of well-connected business mentors and providing formal business training. Women business centers ensure barriers that many newer entrepreneurs normally face, normally face can, can be overcome. They work directly with you, provide support guidance and best practices from their own experiences. As our city looks toward recovery, investing in and supporting small businesses must be a priority. We must equip business owners with practical tools for financial literacy and business know-how, nurturing them to grow, expand, and succeed. In pre-COVID times, the big businesses in New York City, small businesses were legendary. Approximately 230,000 small firms in under 500 square miles. And that's according to New York City's definition, but the federal definition would have 550,000 small businesses in the five counties in New York City. The COVID pandemic cannot pack a final blow to the small business fabric of New York City. Now more than ever, we need to create good jobs, stimulate spending and provide the services, culture and entertainment that makes our city great. These cannot exist without small businesses. Nationally, more Americans are opening new businesses, more than 5.4 million last year alone. And our main streets and industrial manufacturing centers are opening and flourishing. As a result of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, small businesses in our own backyard will gain access to new contracting opportunities to help rebuild our nation's roads and bridges, enabling us to move goods faster to the market and strengthen our supply chains while coincidentally having positive effect of enhancing our revenues. And Andrew was talking about procurement. It's going to become key to gear up our small businesses um, for the money that will be coming uh, you know, into New York. The federal government is not only the world's largest buyer of goods and services, but by law, a certain percentage must be bought from small firms. These opportunities to bring federal dollars into your businesses can be life altering. And guess what? Case SBDC can help advise you on how to do that. Even after our success at helping small businesses recover during the pandemic, the SBA is recommitting itself to our traditional funding programs. That's the screen with the 7A and 504. The PACE SBDC and its advisors are your tools to consult, use, and reach out um, to for individual guidance and one-on-one -on -one assistance with all your small business needs. From counseling and mentorship, the dedicated staff and best-in-class volunteers and empower entrepreneurs uh, to fully participate in the economy. Now, those services are free to you, but they're not free. Um, when I first got here, there was a gentleman who was teaching me about our lending programs. And, you know, Uncle Sam is paying for you to have those free services. So take advantage of them. Uh, the U.S. Business Administration is proud to power the PACE SBDC and guarantee the loans offered by our lending partners, who you'll meet in a little bit. It's part of the positive impact the SBA New York District Office continues to make throughout America's largest city, helping the economy and its largest employers, small business recover. Thank you. So that ends my remarks. I, I, I hope you feel that you have a nation of small businesses uh, supporting you and working with you and you have resource partners and how important you are to New York City. Um, you know, we are the marketing capital, the financial capital, the theater capital, cultural capital of the world, and without small businesses um, to help uh, support those endeavors, you know, that it's a symbiotic relationship. To the people in the audience, the participants, um, we're gonna start the panel, but I want you to think you know, about something, um, you know, we learned a lot at SBA that 
there are many people, you know, we have a saying that you have to work uh, not in your business, but on your business that, you know, you have to take away time from sales and uh, customer service and work on your business. So I want to start, you know, by saying that how important organization is and but on your reaction button, I'm going to give you three statements and let me know if they resonate with you or not. Okay. Uh, one is from one of my favorite um, cards. I don't know if you know the Maxine cards. She always has pearls of wisdom for everybody. So here it goes. I find it helpful to organize chores into categories. Things I won't, uh, things I won't do now, things I won't do later, and things I will I will never do. Okay. The next one. Advantages of being disorganized is that one is always having surprising discoveries. Again, you could give me a reaction if you like that. And the last one is, is I'm not disorganized. I know exactly where everything is. The newer stuff is on top. The older stuff is at the bottom. And Think about that as you're listening to the bankers today telling you what they need to help expedite a loan for you so your business can start, grow, and expand. And with that, I'm going to start the uh, panel today. I'm going to ask each of the panelists to spend about uh, three minutes and, um, and Introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about your bank, what type of bank you are. Are you a branch, man, a branch lender or an online lender? You come to your office or you set up a virtual uh, meeting. Uh, what type of commercial loans you do? What's your sweet spot? Um, what makes your lending, a, a, for the uh, uh, non-bank participants, what makes your lending uh, agency different from the bank and how do you differentiate your services from the bank? What's your sweet spot in lending? And if you could give us a short success story that sort of summarizes this so that our participants can identify um, uh, with what you're saying. So our first speaker today is going to be Jonathan Stern from Flushing Bank. And that's my own handwriting that I couldn't read. <laughs> so. Take it away for the next few minutes. Thank you, Beth. And uh, Andrew, thank you for uh, having me on the panel and welcome everybody this morning. Uh, as Beth had said, my name is Jonathan Stern. I'm a 30 year veteran in banking, real estate and business financing. I currently work for Flushing Bank in their, what we call our commercial industrial group. What that means is business lending in simple terms. So we're a traditional commercial bank we're a community bank, so we're small, and our outreach and our footprint is primarily in the tri-state area. We're about 100 miles outside of Manhattan is where we'll go, to New Jersey and Southern Connecticut. Uh, our sweet spot here in, in uh, New York is primarily from Montauk, I would say, up to Rockland County. But we'll look outside of the, that box. Um, we have kind of a two-pronged approach. We actually introduced a new model, a FinTech model, which are for smaller uh, ticket loans. Uh, we usually look at $50,000 up to $500,000. It's a module where you're usually able to put your information in, upload it, and get an answer within 72 hours if you're a new customer. If you're a current customer of the bank, there may be a couple of other protocol that you have to, to look at. My area of practice then takes it from there. We go from $500,000 in lending up to $30 million. So we're what we call a business banking middle, lower middle market group. Um, we look at product types like lines of credit, as you've heard, uh, you know, in my, from my predecessors, Andrew and Beth had mentioned, lines of credit, term loans, and real estate financing. Uh, the programs we finance are either conventional loans, where we keep those in our portfolio, um, and we have uh, programs that we work with uh, in the SBA group. We are a, what they call a preferred lending partner of the SBA, so we underwrite our 7A loans in-house. We also do 504 lending, and we're a very active participant in 504 loans. Well, we bring a, another participant with us, a CDC, and they actually are able to give us a, uh, a boost uh, for loans that don't fit into our conventional box, and we're able to put those into, uh, uh, you know, get, able to uh, give a, a financing to those types of companies. Uh, time frame in, in, in operation usually is two years and greater. 
Uh, we will do projection-based loans, which I'll, was one of the examples I'm going to give you. That's my success story. Um, and what kind of differentiates us is we're a small bank. We're not Chase or, or, or uh, Citibank. We're not what they call a money center bank. So we're very per we have personalized service. We're service-driven. So we go from lender, when you start with us, to somebody's going to look at you, to handling your relationship throughout the whole process. So it's full service and very more like a white glove service, like the old community banking used to be. Um, we're flat organization, so we are, we are quickly come to a decision on, on, a, on an engagement. We'd rather give you a quick no than a long maybe. Um, my quick success story is a uh, 7A deal that we did actually uh, in 2017. An entity called Heyday Wellness came to me and they sat down and they were a burgeoning company. They do facials. If anybody, any of the women that are in New York City or now they're around the country, uh, they do 50, 30, 50, 75 minute uh, facials. That was their focus. Uh, they had about three locations at the time, and they really weren't fitting into the traditional box. So we kind of looked at it from an SBA perspective. They were looking to open to several other retail locations. Uh, we analyzed this under the seven. Came up with a uh, success story. We're now they were about 60 employees at the time. They are now over 300 employees. They are in thir they're in uh, they have 13 locations in six states. So uh, it does show you that the program. It does service those types of, of uh, requests, and you're able to, if you don't fit into the traditional box, that the SBA programs are a great uh, capital, you know, access to capital where you may not have gotten that in the past. So I'll turn this back over to Beth. Okay. Jonathan, how big was the company when it came to see you? How, how deep, I'm sorry? How big was it? You know, oh, how, how big were they? Uh, they were a couple of million, probably a little under a million and a half. In, in volume, and they were looking for a substantial amount of money, but to open those, they had three stores. Uh, they were retail located, but they also had a service-based business in there. And uh, now they're, they're, they're no longer with the bank, I'll be quite frank, because oh. they step laddered out, they raised equity, and they've grown, and we don't reach out to some of the markets they're in. They're in California, mm -hmm. they're now in Virginia, so they've kind of grown out of us, which it does happen with some of our relationships. Right, and you know, as we talk today um, with our micro lenders up to our bankers, bankers are happy to see their customers grow, right? And, uh, you know, and maybe retain some personal banking relationships with them. But, you know, the micro lenders want to see you get to regular lender, you know, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So we're happy when we uh, have to let go a customer like that. And you said you can begin your process online on an online mod application? We do have an online module, which we just introduced late last year. It's more of what we call a FinTech model where they can actually mm -hmm. go in up. They can uh, probably a 10, 15 minute process to put your information in and upload the documents related to what your request is. And within 72 hours, they'll, they'll give you an answer. Uh, you know, if you've been approved for the loan, line of credit okay. or a term loan. And not to, you know, what are some of those documents that you think someone should have ready when they sit down to do the 15 minute application? Good question. They should, they should, you know, technically your financial, and that's why you always should have your, your, I always say your trusted advisor, your CPA, uh, your, your, your accountant, you should be, be able to work with them to put this together. You need your tax returns for your business, usually for a couple of years, two to three years, depending on the time of it, the length of time that you've been in business. You'll need some personal information, your personal tax returns, because they do require what they call a personal guarantee on the loan. You, you may need to fill out, which you'll fill out in the application, the personal information, which is your old biography and your personal background financially, which is your personal, uh, you know, personal financial statement. Um, so not a lot of documents, and they may be asking you for uh, some additional corporate documents after you're done, but those are the primary documents you'll need to, okay. to apply. So you need a little organization from that pile, right? hundred percent. It's always good to prepare before you come in. Because right. if you don't have those documents, you know, it's, it's just going to put you into a, a mire. You're going to get stopped in the process. So prepare is always a, a good thing to do. Correct. Okay. And one last question. If I went on to um, the bank's website and I wanted to do that 15, is there an instruction sheet that I can, you know, download, use, get my documents and come back? Or do I sort of, you know, should I maybe be at the SBDC preparing that before I attempt that short application. 
It's a good, regardless if it's a, a short application or even longer, it's good to figure out where you fit in the box. The SBDC is a great partner of ours. We do, we, they kind of set everything up. They put all the information together that will help by packaging it. And then when you're able to come in either as, it doesn't matter if it's online or it's in person and we're doing a, you know, a larger ticket loan, you're prepared, whether it's a business plan, projections, and, and the supporting documentation that we need to analyze the request. So yeah, a very, very important thing. Organization, key, 100%. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. Hopefully we'll get back my to pleasure. you more. Thank you guys for having me today and welcome to everybody on the call this morning. Again, my name is Mark Randall and I'm the branch manager for Key Bank in Tarrytown in New York. A little bit about me, I'm 19 years in banking, seven with Key. Uh, most of my career has been in Westchester, although I spent time in Manhattan and the Bronx as well. And I've held multiple roles during that time. Most notably, I've been a small business banker, uh, a market manager, and a branch manager, which again is my current role. Um, to tell you a little bit about Key Bank, uh, Key Bank's roots trace back about 190 years up in Albany, where our headquarters were originally based. Today, Key Corp is based out of Cleveland, Ohio, and we're one of the nation's largest bank-based financial services companies. We're in 15 states, uh, mostly in the Northeast and the Northwest, and we have approximately 1,000 branches. Key Bank is a, a full service bank, so we help both personal and business clients, and we can provide various services depending on your needs to either side. Uh, while technically we're a regional bank, we really do have the resources on par with all of the larger national banks, uh, but our focus really is to provide that community bank feel. We really do that by starting every conversation with what we call a financial wellness review, we really want to know, you know just about you and your business, you know, what's, what's important to you, um, how long have you been in business, uh, where are some of your strengths, uh, where can you use some help, and we want to know what are you looking to accomplish, but not just now, really kind of in the future as well, too, because I really look to get as full and clear a picture as possible so I can provide you know, feedback and recommendations on really how KeyBank can help you achieve those goals. So it's really about making that initial connection. We don't like to assume anything until we really get to know uh, who we're talking with and what they need. And so while I'm at the branch level, I have business banking and lending partners who can help with all levels and types of, of lending needs or business services. Um, a few examples of what some of my partners do is we can do a merchant service, ACH and wire, and we do Bank of Works as well for, uh, for your employees. We can help them about their financial wellness and help them with their banking as well. And obviously, we have a lot of lending options, basically any lending option uh, like credit cards, business loans and lines of credit. We can do uh, equipment lending, and we also do um, commercial um, mortgages as well. So again, anything that you need, we'd be able to have a full conversation with you. And again, whether it's something that I can help in the branch or one of my partners, um, I wanna make sure I get you in contact with that. So for me specifically in the branch, my focus is on loans and lines of credit up to 200,000. So depending on how much you're looking to borrow and what your needs are, um, we can do as little as you know just sign an application, so no documents needed. Um, but it also depends, again, on how much you're looking to borrow and what you may need as well from there. So there are other documents like tax returns, uh, personal financial statement or a debt schedule, things along that line, uh, possibly some other documents, again, depending on what you're looking to borrow or how much you're looking to borrow. Um, recent success story is we had a local business who was a sole proprietor who was growing his business. He recently formed an LLC. Um, he kind of does some specialized business where he, in essence, is like a pottery maker. He makes uh, customized like plates and dishes and cups and um, different things for, like restaurants. He, he does it for, for everyday use as well, too, but his uh, specialty is really doing that for restaurants. And so he had a large order where he needed to uh, fund, basically. He needed to get the material for basically like the clay they needed to get to be able to provide or make these items that the restaurant was looking for. And so he came to us and we had the financial wellness review and we kind of had an understanding as to what he was looking for immediately, but how he possibly would have orders of this size going forward in the future. So we decided that you know a $50,000 line of credit was best for him. And that does fall within our range for no document. So he was able to apply within a few minutes right here at the branch with me and uh, was able to get his money within a couple of days. So again, all it was a signed application. And again, because of his needs and uh, the dollar amount, there was nothing else that was additionally needed at that point. And so he was able to fund his order within a couple of days. And now he has that line available to him in case he gets other orders of that nature. Because again, the conversation went that his business is growing. So he may have orders like this in the future as well. Um, so that's kind of just a, a high level overview, maybe one success story of uh, you know, what KeyBank can bring. But uh, is there any questions that you have right now, Beth? So, um... You know, there were two things that interested me, the, the financial wellness review and the 
no documents. So um, there must be something you're using to base that loan on. So what is that? What, what is your uh, secret sauce for uh, uh, somebody who's sitting there and saying, I don't have to look through the pile for my documents? Yeah. I'll bring my account. Yeah. So, you know. It, it is about having that relationship as well, too. So, I mean, even if you're not currently banking with Key, it definitely helps to have that relationship. So, in this particular case, he had a relationship with the bank for, for a couple of years. So, we knew him and his banking needs and what his business, where his business was trending. So, that definitely helps. There is a, a credit check, though, so I should say. So, we did make sure that we, we ran the credit for the business to understand um, that this could be something that um, we could support. So, I mean, on the application itself, we had asked a couple of questions about just um, what the business revenue was and things of that nature as well. So we, we got a, a picture, but directly from the business owner without actually asking for those documents to support those numbers. Okay, so um, one thing that I think that's really important is that uh, the borrower didn't walk in as a stranger to the bank. And so many small businesses seek lending support when they really, really, really need money, which is probably the worst time for you to <laughs> seek money, find, you know, find money. Uh, businesses should set up lines of credit and have uh, cash available, or factoring, whatever they need to run their particular industry. But walking in on day one when you really need money on day one is not a good idea. It's part of being organized again that you have a bank or several banks that you deal with who help you in different facets of your business. And, and you can get a decision apparently pretty quickly because they're looking at your banking history and your deposits and your withdrawals and how you pay your bills, right? And they're running a credit check. And you know, do you have a number on that credit check that allows you to sign off automatically? Is there a number you're looking for credit score? It's a good question, but it does go through underwriting. So they do try, try to take a look at the entire picture. So there's no one specific criteria for credit they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a range that you'll, you know, is there an absolute minimum credit score that KeyBank deals with? Or? Honestly, nothing that I'm, I'm familiar with. Um, we really like to just assess what each individual's needs are. And then we can see if just say if the credit is low, what else is doing well, maybe with the business where it can possibly help. So there really is no bottom floor that I really want to speak of. Okay. And then my uh, last question in this financial wellness review, when someone comes in and talks to you, what's your expectation that they have, that they come and, you know, talk to you well, about? Well, we would hope they they know about their business, uh, you know, what, how, how sales are going or what industry that they're in and maybe kind of how they're trending. Um, some new businesses may not completely understand the industry that they're in. So part of that financial wellness review gives them an opportunity to give us some insight to them as to what we found out about what their particular industry uh, may or may be doing or trending where, where revenue comes from, what some businesses in that same industry are doing to be successful. So we help educate, you know, as well. But it really depends on how much information that they know about their business. Again, you know where their uh, target clients are and what they're looking to do. So at the beginning of the pandemic, um, we were looking two weeks out for sales revenue, right? Like you know those projections that we do six months, one year, three years went out the window, and we were really looking like you know is the business that you're relying on uh, going to be in business to support? me as the entrepreneur. What's happening now with the supply chain and when you're doing that financial review, how is that affecting lending to small businesses? Yeah, they're still taking that into consideration. Again, you're right, you know, if they're relying on you know, their, their receivables to come in to either provide their merchandise or even just to get paid back for whatever um, services or products that they paid out, we wanna make sure we have a clear picture on you know, um, how quickly or if they will still get paid or if the supply chain is really holding them up. So again, we really like to have that in-depth conversation to get a full understanding. So we understand that there are issues right now. So we definitely take that into consideration, but we work with every client to find out what's the best way to still help them with their goal. Okay, and one last question. Um, where does the SBA lending come into your bank's purview? 7A, uh, 504, 
So that's not something I specifically handle. We do have an SBA lender um, working with KeyBank. And so depending on the deal, so yeah, when someone comes in looking for lending, we look at our conventional in-branch uh, methods typically first, again, depending on what their needs are. If there's something that we feel wouldn't necessarily meet our in-bank criteria, then I can reference or uh, refer them to our um, SBA lender here as well. We can have a, a larger conversation from them. So mm -hmm. uh, again, it, I would then refer to one of my partners for that, which one might be best for them. Okay, so the SBDC would be able to help the participants figure out who a key bank working with you may be able to help them if they, had, if they felt that it was an SBA loan. And for, yeah, the absolutely. and for the participants out there, you know, some of lending is science and some of it is gut. And uh, when the bank is not sure whether you have enough collateral or sales or there's something that they want to do alone, uh, with you, but they're not sure, they turn to the SBA to provide that guarantee. So um, the truth is, is we don't want your house or your firstborn or your cars, um, but uh, the SBA is there to turn a maybe into a yes. Um, it's not going to turn a no into a yes. It's going to turn a maybe into a yes. And uh, that's what we're here to support small business. Okay, thanks, Mark. How are you okay. doing? Okay, how are you doing? Uh, okay, I'm doing fine. You, bike just, ride, just... you bike riding in Brooklyn? What's going on there? Oh, yeah, just on <laughs> about, you know, you know, just like a regular loan officer, you know, seeking out who needs some. Um, sometimes we can walk around and just see around what's around the business, my needs <laughs> or services, right? Because, um, so my name is Jesus Flores. Good morning, everybody. I am a loan officer for uh, Brooklyn Cooperative. We're a local credit union. We've been around going on 20 years strong now. Um, and we are really local, so it's like, it's, it's barely, you know, we we get most of our clients to referrals or do like walkthroughs. You know, once uh, sometimes we'll step into a store, see if you they, if they need funding, or if they visit the new store around the neighborhood, we'll talk to the people, the owners. Um, so yeah, so we are really local based. So our loans are primarily focused and gear, geared for Brooklyn Brooklynites, right, or a business that generates revenue from Brooklyn. So we do fund businesses that are in Queens, Manhattan, as long as a certain percentage of revenue is generated by Brooklyn base, because that is what our charter is limited to us. We have to fund Brooklyn businesses or, or businesses that, that are benefit Brooklyn. Um, so our sweet spot, I would probably say, is more on the startup phase and also more on the mom and pops, right? Um, we don't necessarily do large loans. We have done a couple of large loans but the six years i've been here we might have only touched a 7a loan for above you know above five hundred thousand, maybe once or twice ours is more under that hundred thousand and under the fifteen thousand to ten thousand you know sort of like what you were alluding to when you were saying you know somebody who is like in the process of starting up might not have everything all the documents in place we try to help them out uh through referring them to you guys or within within our in-house uh, business mentor um so yeah so as far as our you know like the match we could probably do the turnaround we could probably get you a reply within two weeks of if you're looking for a loan under 100k 100k and under um for startups same thing 15,000 we require less documentation for startups we just want to make sure that everything's already filed ein um if you have a lease make sure you have the pre-lease already signed up or if you have an executed lease that, that as well um you don't necessarily have to um, have the business plan, like a full detailed business plan. We just need to see uh, something that you've started either with a business advisor or business mentor. That would definitely be great. Uh, projections, those are not necessarily a heavy requirement. Those are, we require that, but we don't really sustain our, we don't really underwrite based on that. We are basically underwriting a startup loan based on your ability to repay. So I usually welcome secondary income, primary income. Um, when you have somebody who is, you're about to leave their their nine to five job to solely start the business. That usually is a bad move. I usually try to catch that before I present it to the loan officers because I don't want them to go through all this work and just get denied. So definitely keep that in focus. If you're in the startup phase, you definitely want to have a primary source of income. You don't want to go to a lender and say, "Hey, look, I'm quitting my job and I'm gonna, you know, I work for you know airlines and I'm gonna all of a sudden start up a coffee shop." You know, that might not be the best approach because they're going to say, okay, that's all great and dandy, but where is, where is the funding going to come from and where is the expertise going to come from? Um, so 
I guess let me, uh, so aside from the SBA programs, we do do our own lending. Um, we do lend to informal businesses, people that can't qualify for SBA. So, you know, it could be somebody who is, you know, reselling, um, you know, maybe may, is starting really small, starting a bakery, so they don't really formalize. They're just baking from their house and selling it online. We do lend to those individuals that might not necessarily qualify under the SBA standards. Um, they, we limit it to the same amount, to 100 and under. But usually for those individuals, we'll start, we'll start them off at a smaller amount, 10 to 15,000. Um, as far as products we do, we do offer two sorts of products. We offer terms and we offer lines of credit. So the lines of credit are primarily um, for established businesses. So by, by that, I mean somebody who's been in business for two, uh, for two years, 24 months consecutively. And because then we can rely on the financials and we can make, you know, um, estimation based on, you know, and projections on what, the, what, the, what it's looking like. And we could also see the growth where, where it says if you're a startup or if you're your first year, um, we're probably going to give you a term loan, right? Because the term loans are well, well, work well for more um, starting up uh, businesses because they don't really have cash flow coming in, uh, um, established cash flow is the, start, the established businesses already have. So to that, let me, I guess I'll give you a perfect example of um, a success story that we have. Um, I was doing underwriting and then a small um, a young lady came in, you know, she wanted to borrow a loan. She was not a member of the credit union, but she qualified because her production was locally. So what they do, uh, I maybe some of you guys have heard of him. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard of the business. It's called Wondering Barman. They do bottle cocktails. So when the business owner approached me, um, was doing underwriting, she gave me a business plan. And then, you know, that's something that we really don't really do is uh, liquor. But it sort of it caught my attention because it was a production. It wasn't selling right straight to consumers. Her thing was she was bottling cocktails to make the consistency better for bartenders. So these were primarily geared to businesses. So instead of like you having to go to happy hour or consumers going over there and not getting the same quality every time they order a drink, they just pop it up, put it in, and um, and basically it was like it was really cheap and everything was all natural. So I ended up doing that small loan. We gave him a really startup loan for about ten thousand dollars, if I'm mistaken. Um, and this is sort of where you know sometimes even though you got a relationship with your bank, it's still they still looking, they're still analyzing the growth of a business. So her growth was too uh, too fast, and what, this is the mistake she did when she came to apply for a second loan with us, is that she was not paying her debt off fast enough, even though she was showing a lot of growth. So if there was a lot of growth, we would assume that, you know, she would pay, make a little, a little more effort to pay down more of a loan. But all that to say, is she ended up actually flourishing. She actually opened up a uh, brick and mortar uh, in Williamsburg. Uh, they ended up actually expanding to several states, several airlines, several hotels, right? And, and that's a loan we couldn't do. So she went and did a loan with uh, what is now called Pursuit. Um, and when we have a loan that we cannot do, we definitely refer to other SBA lenders. So I tend to have like a bunch of business cards or, or an Excel spreadsheet with a lot of uh, other SBA lenders that, that I would refer to if we cannot do the loan. Um, because again, we are all in the, in, in the same business. We're here to help small businesses grow. And if we can't do it, it does us no harm for us to refer to somebody else because we definitely do like to see for fellow New York businesses, especially local businesses to flourish and become bigger because then that usually brings back more into the community and makes it a better. Um, so that is basically my 101 of Brooklyn Cooperative. Uh -huh. I primarily lend out of, uh, of Myrtle, uh, Brooklyn, um, our Brooklyn location. We are in the process of actually revamping that. And we are also in the process of opening up another branch in East New York. So that is another location that severely needs a lot of uh, local funding, um, is small business as well, because I know most of them probably don't have small business. They're relying on cash. You never want to rely on your, on your, on your what if money you should be relying more on loans and saving, you know, your rainy day funds for when it, you actually need it, you know, so. So when, uh, if I'm considering opening a business and let's say I do have some knowledge about what it is, um, when you consider primary income is, uh, if, you know, if you have a significant other, is that okay? Or bank of mom and dad, you know, how, how does that work for you versus, you know, credit card debt or, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. So we definitely do welcome other sources of income, right? Co-signers, you know, guarantors would definitely strike the, the loan. So we actually, I ended up doing one of those. That was actually a similar situation that happened is uh, this other individual, she opened up a coffee shop. She used to work for 
a fashion company. And then she used to by, uh, primarily be in charge of sales. So she would be the individual that would, you know, when high end clients came in, she would basically uh, guide them around and, you know, uh, and they had like a small cafe in there. So she really got into like knowing the staff in there. She wanted, she was intrigued and she loved and she wanted to go into that. So when she told me that, I'm like, okay, that sounds fine. You, yeah, but are you still keeping your job at the company? They're like, no, I'm leaving it. I'm like, what? You cannot do that, right? But the good thing is her significant other was able to co-sign on her with the loan. So that was able to provide, you know, the, uh, you know, the viability of the loan to be able to repay if she, if she could not repay it based on the sole source of income of the business. Uh, to date, she's still in business. She's doing great. Uh, she was able to open up the spot. Well, the location was pretty ideal because she opened the spot right next to a charter school. And what better place to open up a coffee shop than to a school, right? The next to parents dropping off their kids, picking up their kids, teachers, that is the ideal place location. So sometimes the location also matters when you're opening up a business. Good, good idea. One last thing before we move to Jason, do you, do, help, do you help your potential borrowers do credit repair? Uh, so yes, we do. We do have an on an on staff uh, finance counselor. Um, I used to be a former financial counselor with the program of uh, the, the New York City and uh, Financial Department Center. So uh, if I cannot help them, I send them. If they need more help, I send it to them. But usually, if they're a member of the credit union, I will gladly, uh, you know, spend some time with them. You know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe overlooking their credit report, talking to what they need to do to possibly qualify. Um, so, you know, cause uh, we're all there, we're, we're there to help them. Uh, I even have helped people get their student loans out of default when they're in default, they couldn't qualify for SBA because they're faulted. So I know that's usually one thing that takes some time. So again, we're a credit union, so we're there for our members, you know, so we try to do as much as we can, uh, to the best abilities. If not, we refer them to other institutions that could do that. Great. Thanks, Jesus. Um, uh, Renee, we're going to move to Jason now. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity to be of service. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jason Cole. I've been involved in banking and uh, commercial lending for over 32 years, uh, almost 32 years, and um, helping small businesses fund their future for all that time. Family-owned businesses, entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm working with um, a company, Capital Now which is a CDFI, a community, um, uh, community development financial institution. It's a very specialized uh, organization. We're a non-for-profit that's uh, authorized by the SBA to, um, to work, with, um, work with the Community Advantage Program, which means it's basically the SBA 7A, a little bit more streamlined and focused for um, really small businesses on the, on the smaller side of the scheme. Um, where we lend 250000 up to $250,000. So a company capital does SBA micro lending to uh, businesses up to 75. And I mainly focus on um, working with companies who need, who have needs in the 75 to 250 range using the SBA uh, Community Advantage Program. So the special thing about the program is the, um, it's really our focus and ability to to help startups, that's number one. Half of what I do is working with startups, um, pretty much. Um, we we have a focus on um, minority and women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, um, those that are in a uh, low to moderate income neighborhoods or income zones, um, and otherwise distressed um, situations or or neighborhoods and things of that nature that um, oftentimes um, are kind of maybe overlooked or just don't qualify for traditional banks and, and they're just on the small side and the large banks don't certainly don't pay attention to, you know, the 250 and under, under zone. Um, our, applica our, our application is, um, I'm reading through your questions here, our application is um, um, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's a normal financial history that's taken from any of my, from, from any lender that you need is historic personal and, and, uh, and business uh, tax returns and whatnot. Uh, we have a we have a simple application. Our initial process uh, involves getting pre-screened with the SBA, so it's very simple coming in to say, all right, does the SBA uh, pre-qualify you for this um, for this for this loan? Can we do business with you in a streamlined way using the Community Advantage Program? And that's the first step. So that takes that's pretty quick. Within a day, we'll know whether or not what path we have to take to consider your request. Um, so, um, so yeah, the, our sweet spot, like I said, 
startups were able to help companies who um, who really who really have no other no other options. Um, one of, one of the things we also are mandated to do as a CDFI is provide technical assistance. That's why we work with the SBA, SPDC and then Andrew's team so well, because um, we're always uh, coordinating that technical assistance side of things um, in combination with the loans um, and the, lo the lending need that the borrower is looking for. So for example, Andrew will bring a client that's working on a business plan and will take it, take it to the next step and um, you know, help, with, uh, help with the lending, figure out what they need and, and how they need it. So um, our loans are pretty, pretty simple, very you know, structured just like the SBA 7A. Uh, it is the 7A. Basically, we'll do term loans for businesses up to 10 years, and it's priced, um, you know, it's a variable rate typically, normally, um, based on prime. And um, so our loans a success story. Cheap. Our loans aren't cheap, which is one of the things I was going to tell the audience, right? We're cash yes. flow lenders, so we're more interested in giving you a small monthly payment, but that SBA guarantee comes with a cost. It's like an insurance premium over what the bank or lender is charging. So, but interest rate should not be, as long as it's not usury, like some of the online lenders should not be of a concern to you. What should be of a concern to you is that monthly payment especially on a term loan, because probably what our Jason- programs are, you know, Our programs have maximum allowable rates. So is, is, everything is very straightforward and, and, known, and known upfront about how, what the, you, know, you can't change the rate the last minute. And a, there is a ceiling to it all because of, uh, it's just limited. What's the rate right now, for example? Um, my, 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 as a CDFI and the community advantage, I can, I'm allowed, um, our maximum, the limit is prime plus six. Normally we don't get up to the 9% range, which that is. Um, more often than not, the, uh, the final rate on our loans or my C, uh, community advantage loans are somewhere between six and a half and seven and a half. Uh, I might add to, to those who need less than 75,000 in our microloan program, we are still charging, uh, call it the COVID rate, um, those micro loans are three year loans at three percent. So if you don't need the, you know, they don't have to have the larger loan amounts. Um, if your business doesn't warrant that, then that's still a good, uh, still a great situation that we're offering. So I interrupted still, you. You were talking. Can you give us your success story? Yes. Well, um, recently closed on uh, several startups, and I think startups are always a always a, always not just fun and they just they just feel good to help uh, help people realize their dreams so we um, worked with uh, an, a startup barbershop a high-end barbershop in Manhattan a wellness center a facial slash salon wellness center in Manhattan um, we've worked we, we recently closed on a couple of restaurants uh, when we are lending the restaurants today um, believe it or not, um, given the, given the, the, the last uh, two years stress, but yeah, we'll, we'll consider all industries and um, yes. So the startups are, startups are a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of excitement and, and fulfillment when, when that gets done. So most people don't lend to startups or they say a startup has to be in business for two years when you're sort of dependent on those credit cards or the bank of mom and dad. Um, what's your definition of a startup? Well, um, I go by, well, it's, it's multi-layered because the SBA considers anything under two years technically a startup situation. Um, I can, you know, I'm working with folks who are really just, un, you know, not, 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 you know, from day, from day one, from day one without any, just an idea to, you know, just just opening, uh, just launching, or just in, in two, one or two years in business. But a startup is, you know, you haven't opened your doors yet, and you need you need uh, equipment, you need um, you need whatever you need for your particular business to get going. So um, it's not it's not it's not the same as looking at a company that's been around for three years or ten years or fifty years, because you you really have to um, examine what they know about the business and the industry, what their direct experience has been, 
Uh, do they have other people working with them that can substitute for their experience somehow? Um, they also have to um, have some skin in the game, as everyone everyone says, in terms of have they put up any capital? What what risk are they taking financially to uh, to go about this venture? And uh, Jesus touched on a very important thing is, you know, don't quit your day job kind of concept is what is your household budget and what is, um, you know, how do you support your family or your current situation? And, you know, who's working and who's paying the bills at home? to um so that you have some 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 lead some you have at least a, a chance to succeed in your business because um you know because your ho your home budget is taken care of that's very important right great thank you very much sounds like you have your organization has a real niche in that startup uh field and you are you lending in all five boroughs or what what is oh yeah we um we're we're, we're mandated in in the new york city and surrounding areas. So five boroughs and surrounding counties typically in New York. All right, so I dropped some of the common questions in the chat right now, if folks wanna take a look and I'll read a few off to get started. Um, okay. An easy one for you, Beth, might be for SBA lenders, um, approved lenders. Is the lender match website the best option for folks to reference for that? So Lend Lender Match is, you know, uh, our dating service. And if you can um, put your need in there, uh, banks will uh, sort of date you. You know, um, there's no grants and there's no free money. But yes, a lot of lenders support, I think over 400 lenders or maybe more. I might be wrong about that. Um, support that and you can find that. The, the other great resource is to go to a resource partner. Uh, banks are niche lenders, like um, it's unusual that Jason lends, in my opinion, to startups and to almost every industry. There are you know, certain banks that if you're a florist, they're better to go there or you're in the garment center. Um, you know, in the old, I'm, I'm thinking of the old days, uh, maybe pre-COVID in almost last century, but New York had districts and in those districts, they had lenders who knew your particular industry. So it's very important uh, to find a lender who's comfortable lending to your industry. So restaurants are a specialty, garment firms are a specialty. If I was making a uh, steel fabricated jet engines for the Air Force, that would be a specialty lender and you would want to sort of find people who are comfortable with your, your industry or your area and know, you know, uh, will my restaurant be successful? Uh, as Jesus said, he thought the coffee house had a home run being next to a school, um, but maybe if that was located, uh, I'm looking out my window at New York and I'm overwhelmed at what I could use as an example where a coffee house wouldn't work. Um, you know, uh, you know, bankers have, as I said before, have a gut feeling and they have to have a gut feeling that you're going to be successful. So, yeah, so your local SBDC office and there is a uh, link that Renee can provide you with also to find a lender, uh, you know, uh, we we had a lot of lenders jump on board with the Paycheck Protection Program. We like uh, quadrupled their number of lenders in the country, and many lenders lend, you know, lend from outside of our area into the uh, New York market. So we're not just a uh, local a local market. Okay. I'm gonna jump in for a quick second. There was a question in the chat that's outside of the discussion points today, but there was a question about construction financing. Uh, I did put a link in the chat about contract financing, which um, oftentimes uh, incorporates uh, individual business owners that are um, keen on securing uh, contracts uh, to be able to do construction projects and other projects with various government entities. Uh, so this is outside of um, our discussion today, as I said, but if you're looking at securing a contract with the city or state uh, agency, uh, there are some programs in place that are available to be able to access those. And if you wanna take a look at the link in the chat, uh, you know, feel free to, to click through there and see more information. And obviously 
uh, we'd be delighted to have one of our business advisors speak with you if that's useful and relevant to your business venture. Right. Absolutely. And the city of New York runs the program, right, Andrew, on construction financing? Yeah, one, one from the state and one from the city as well. One quick one I see from um, Teresa about uh, setting up an online appointment. Yes, in fact, I'll put that in the chat as well. As I mentioned at the uh, top of the session today, uh, our business advisors throughout the state are available to work with you um, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. They are available online. If you're here in the city, I'll, I'll drop our contact info and you can let us know that you attended today's session. You wanna meet with an S a Pace SBC business advisor. If you're located elsewhere in the state, um, we do have uh, the opportunity for you to connect with somebody in your local community as well. Thank you. Andrew, how long does it typically take when someone submits the, um, the appointment form for the SBDC to get back and arrange the appointment? Yeah, I mean, it depends on send up for us. It's typically within a day or two, sometimes less. Perfect. And who would be the best lender to talk to a series LLC entity? I would assume everybody lends, you know, that the business entity structure is not prohibiting any lender from doing le lending with that borrower. It's having your, you know, organization set up appropriately to being an LLC and having that information available. Thank you. I There's a question if nodding, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question if show us, excuse me, if folks should so uh, shop rates and loan terms. Well, each bank will set its own rate um depending on risk their risk assessment so the more comfortable you make a lender your partner and they're comfortable with your uh business uh either plan or existing business rate is a reflection of how risky they think it is to, for them to lend to you and as um mark said he knows his borrowers when they come in and he's able to facilitate them quickly, and I'm sure the ones he facilitates quickly, I'm taking a guess here, get a good rate. <laughs> SBA, uh, my team of people do not do one-on-one -on -one counseling. I want to stress that, you know, we're not, we're not business advisors. We teach our lenders how to use our programs, and we're happy to refer you, but if you have one-on-one -on -one questions, and it's best for you to go into a breakout room uh, with either Andrew or one of the lenders that you think might be able to help you. If you have questions about what the SBA lending programs are, what exactly is 7A, why is the 504 program the best real estate loan anywhere in the country, um, come and see us and we'll explain that to you so then you can then talk to a lender about it. Uh, you know, Jonathan mentioned he does 504 loans and there's another entity involved. Um, and we'll explain that to you that, you know, we sell to ventures on the markets and they're sold to the secondary markets, but uh, we don't want to pour anyone who wasn't interested in those details <laughs> today with the technicalities of our lending program, so. No worries. And Beth, I suspect you would be a great source if someone's not sure which bank to jump into a breakout room with, they can jump into your room or the Pace SBDC room right. to figure out which breakout room they should go into. Thank you so much. Enjoy your breakout rooms. Beth, Andrew, is there anything I missed before I click this button to open up all the rooms? No, Renee, thanks so much for managing all the technology yeah. and for co-hosting as well. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you, the attendees, got a great deal out of this. Feel free to jump from room to room, meet different lenders. And obviously, if you're not working with an SBDC advisor already, uh, please do connect with us as well. We'd be more than happy to work with you uh, and help you as, as you continue to build and grow your business. And uh, thanks to you and your team for your partnership and obviously for the lenders for all your insights today. I really appreciate it.